time for chapter 14. In chapter 13, Goethe brought Anna some bread and Anna says things to kind of make us think that she's part of the state propaganda, potentially, in a way. Um, and we learned about how propaganda means um, like something that the state or the government produces to try to pe get people to think a certain way. Um, and Anna's actions like really disappoint Goethe, and then she finds the building that her father wants her to find. And she realizes that it is right up against the death strip. Um, so I'm just gonna show you that picture again so we can kind of visualize. So imagine that um, the building that she is talking about, that she's found, is within the border zone, okay? The border zone it was supposed to be a place that you were not meant to go, but they say this building was right against the wall. They used the building as part of um, the, the construction of the wall, so that's why it happens to be um, in that area. So this here being the death strip, it goes right against that. So imagine like there's no wall here and there's a building, and it backs up right onto it. Okay, let's begin. My opportunity came the following morning. So remember, she's going to try to find uh, the building again and she's gonna bring a shovel. <clears throat> it was Sunday and Mama had plans to go to church. She never invited us along. Not because she didn't want us there, but because she knew the state frowned on religion meaning the state was not a fan of people practicing um, their religion at this time. They would punish her for being in church, not directly anyway, but she thought it might, sorry, let me back up. They wouldn't punish her for being in church, not directly anyway, but she thought it might somehow affect Fritz and me, another stain in our files. Fritz said he had plans to meet up with some friends, which I think included a girl named Claudia. The only things I knew about her was she sold bicycles and wore her hair in the bouffant style like young women did in the West. I overheard Fritz's friends teasing him about her, and by his reaction it was obvious that he liked Claudia a lot. The minute he left, I hurried down to the basement of our apartment, grabbed our shovel, and left for that old building in Papa's picture. I had hoped for an uneventful walk there, but a young girl hauling a big shovel through the city is hardly inconspicuous. Inconspicuous meaning um, that it's, it's drawing attraction towards her. So it's, she's attracting attention from people because of what she's doing. She wants to be inconspicuous, but she's not. I hadn't even left my own block when Frau Eberhardt, oh, and I just wanted to pause to talk about those words, uh, Herr, Herr, and Frau, which basically mean like Mr. and Mrs., okay? A woman who lived in our apartment building greeted me and asked, where are you going with that? Does your mother know what you're up to? Frau Eberhardt always looked to me like the human version of a turkey, minus the feathers. She collected gossip like other women might collect buttons or teacups. In the West, she'd have been dismissed as a simple busybody or snooping neighbor. But behind the wall, we all knew the neighborhood tattler was, a dan was as dangerous as fire. Stasi informants were paid well. So I'm wondering, why do you think Gertz is so wary of Frau Eberhardt and other gossipy people? And also informants were people who the secret police would pay to give them information secretly. So it's, it's possible that she is an informant. I uh, want to surprise my mother, I stammered. I found an area for a garden just a few streets away. Inwardly, I kicked myself for the way my voice had trembled as I lied, looking anywhere but at her. No, I was supposed to be smarter than this. Papa expected more of me. Somehow, knowing he would want me to lie made it easier. Frau Eberhardt's beak of a mouth pursed together as if she wasn't quite sure whether I had told the truth. I was sure she could read the deceit that was almost certainly written all over my face. So deceit meaning dishonesty. But this wouldn't be my last lie. Mama often warned me that the Stasi had blanketed the country with informants. It might be a bus driver or a coworker or even a family member. And it wouldn't have surprised me in the least if the woman I was facing ran off to the Stasi to tattle on me, if she guessed the real reason for my shovel. 
Finally, she smiled. A garden is a delightful surprise for any mother. But if you want me to keep your secret, then I'll expect some of your harvest. Maybe that was just polite conversation and totally meaningless. Or maybe she wanted a bribe for her silence. I really didn't know. Either way, it presented a problem since there wasn't going to be any harvest. All I could do was avoid bumping into her again for a long time, forever, if I could arrange it. Once I spotted the building, I did a careful check for any officers in the area. This time, fresh tire tracks ran through the crusty dirt, so I knew they had come through only last night. Hopefully, they meant, that meant they wouldn't feel the need to come back around anytime soon. I got as close to the Berlin Wall as I dared, but not because I was challenging the Grenzers. Just the opposite, in fact. I knew if any eyes looked down on this area, then the closer I stood to the wall, the better chance I would have of slipping past them unnoticed. For my own safety, I would use their barricade against them. My heart was locked in my throat as I crossed to the building, but nothing suggested that anyone had seen me. No sirens or barking dogs or soldiers shouting off uh, orders. After a tense moment, I finally allowed myself to breathe again. Like all the others around it, this building looked like an old shop that had been abandoned for longer than I'd been alive, and there was no reason for anyone to come out of this out-of-the-way street. I crouched beside each of the ground-level windows and pressed at the boards, hoping for one that seemed loose. The first two windows were still boarded up tight, but the third seemed to have some give. I had to use the shovel to pry the boards loose, but I finally managed to open up a small gap, then slide through it. Once inside, I had a short jump onto a hard dirt floor. It smelled of mold and rotting wood from the floorboards above me, and the standing water in the corners probably still hadn't dried out from winter. The only light came in slivers between the wood boards across the windows and painted creepy, dusty shadows. It gave me a shiver, though I couldn't be sure if that was because the room was chilly or because I was afraid. No matter how eerie this room was, I also knew full well that the boundary for the Berlin Wall ran straight through this building. If I touched the brick on the far end of this room, I would be standing within the line of the death strip. In fact, I thought the Grenzers would probably consider this entire building inside that forbidden zone. If so, then I was in the death strip now. I wanted to leave, to just climb back out the window and run to the safety of my bedroom. I never had to tell anyone about this place, and the next time I saw my father, I could just shrug, his, shrug at him as if I had never gotten that picture. He could go forward with his life, and I could go forward with mine. But now that I was here, I knew I couldn't do that. Papa wanted me to find this building, and he wanted me to dig here. I wasn't sure why he had chosen this place, but it was important enough to let me take the risk of standing here. It had to be good. An entire chest full of money, or better yet, fake passports that would allow us an easy slide across the border, or something better than I could dream of. Something he believed was worth the risk to my life. A crumbling stone stairway led to the main floor above me. I poked my head up there, and printed in old paint on the wall was a faded sign that simply said welcome in, meaning welcome. In that moment, I named this place in my mind the Welcome Building. The main floor was empty except for piles of old brick. The same brick filled every window and door opening facing onto the death strip. There was enough brick so they could have sealed up all the back openings too. Maybe they'd given up before they'd finished. Another stairway went to an upper level, an attic maybe. But nothing would ever get me up there where I was even more exposed. I crept back downstairs for the hunt for Papa's treasure. After choosing my starting place, I raised the shovel stuck the tip of the blade into the dirt, and crunched my foot down on the blade's shoulder. But in the hard earth, it didn't even go down a full centimeter. I tried again, pushing harder, and even jumped up onto it, using all my weight to force the blade into the ground. But nothing I did made any difference. It was like digging through concrete with a spoon. I moved the shovel to a different spot and tried again, but still with no success. The same thing happened in another corner. It was quickly becoming obvious that my father hadn't buried a single thing in this basement, not unless he had done it 30 years ago, because I was convinced this hard ground hadn't been disturbed for at least that long. I tried and still another place, right in the center of the room. This time my blade struck something metal. It rattled enough that I quickly fell to my knees to quiet the echoing vibrations. I dropped the shovel and ran my fingers along the ground, feeling for the edges of the metal. Whatever it was, it lay nearly at the surface with only a thick layer of dust to cover it. 
If my father was going to bury something to be kept secret from the Sazi, he could have done better than putting it right at the surface. Anyone might find it this way. Then my heart dropped as I realized another possibility. Maybe his treasure had already been discovered and only the empty container remained. I had found the edges now with some sort of metal plank wide enough to stand on. When I brushed off the dirt, I saw grooves cut into one side and hinges on the other. This wasn't a plank, it was a door buried in the earth. Is this what you guys expected her to find in the building? I was surprised by what she found. Curiosity was mounting inside my chest so much that I almost couldn't stand it. I pried the door open with the shovel and then pulled it the rest of the way open. The door was heavier than I had imagined, but I was certain that something inside it would make all the risk and effort worth it. With some effort, I got the door open. I peered down, but it led to a hole too deep to see the bottom, with a rusty metal ladder on the side that I didn't entirely trust to hold my weight. Nor did I have any interest in diving into some unknown darkness without knowing whether I could get back up again, and with nobody in the world aware of where I was. I wished I had a flashlight. I walked around it to get a better sense of what was down there, then happened to notice a dim writing stamped onto the underneath side of the door. Luschusram, an air raid shelter. There were hundreds of them all over Berlin, places built underground during the Second World War when the Allies began bombing the city. There was nothing special about them. We had one under my own apartment building, in fact, and so did Anna. So there was no reason, none at all, why my father would go to the trouble of putting anything special inside this one so far from home. So an air raid shelter would be like a little place inside your home in the basement where if you go inside, you're safe from bombs. I closed the door and even scattered dirt across it again and did my best to erase any evidence that I had been there. Obviously, I misunderstood my father's instructions. Whatever his meaning was with the silly dances in the picture, I couldn't understand it. Maybe there was no meaning. Maybe his dance was only a dance, and the picture was only a picture. It might not even be from him at all. If I was reading secret messages into it, that was only a sign of my boredom and desire to find some lost connection with my father. I climbed out of the basement, pulled the boards that had blocked the window back into place and stashed the shovel beneath some rubble in the alleyway so I wouldn't have to answer any questions about it on the way home. Smart girl. I hadn't lost hope, no. That wasn't the right word for it. I wasn't lost because I didn't intend to try finding it again. As I walked home that morning, I simply accepted the reality that it was wrong for me to have ever had hope in the first place. Hmm. Did the end of this chapter surprise you? This whole time, Gertrude has been so hopeful, so excited about what her father was going to show her, and sounds like she's really disappointed. What do you think of her reaction to what she's found? Do you think maybe she's missing something? Okay, we're almost a third of the way through the book. I hope you're enjoying it, and um, soon we'll have another discussion on Parlay so we can share ideas. <laughs>